The Covenant War is all around you in Halo, and what we see three times is the one ship that led Master Chief to the start of what would be human's victory and ending the Covenant War. Join me today as we print the Pillar of Autumn. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, as I said, we are going to print the Pillar of Autumn model. So this is a model that I did find out on Thingiverse. I did blow it up a little bit. It's got some really awesome detail. Um, it's in three pieces, so you guys will see me assemble it after I do the print of the time lapse. I have not painted this one. I do plan on painting this one in another video, but the overall detail really makes me think of the original Halo game. And you guys will get a close up of this as we go through of the original Halo games detail. Now, when I blew it up, the detail kind of stretch and you kind of lose the detail a little bit that you would think you would see but that's the fun of painting this as well as you can go back and get a lot of that detail back into your model um so as i said this game was seen this ship was only seen a few times in the halo universe but let's be honest this is the ship that even though it was considered the slowest ugliest worst cruiser in the earth uns unsc fleet in the end, it became one of the best ships because of the refits and everything that happened right at the Fall of Reach in the Fall of Reach game. Or if you read the book, The Fall of Reach. So this ship had been refit, it had new reactors, it was faster, and its hull composition was way different than most ships built in the UNSC. So it actually gave it a lot of strength to take a pounding. Um, so the games where you see this ship, you see it in Halo Reach, you see it in Halo, in Halo CE, which are the same game just remade then you also hear about it you don't fizz actually see it you see it as a dot on the map in halo wars um so the guns the detail on this i just love it but let's get this thing sliced into kira you guys can slice size this up and down i did all three pieces in one print in one build plate um you'll see me tear off support you'll see me put it to glue it together then you'll get a real good close-up of this final product and it's a great set up piece for your shelf and honestly i think i printed this for under five dollars so when you take in the material five bucks um you won't find a model out on the internet for less than probably 40 or 50. now granted that's painted but you know that's part of the fun of 3d printing is getting to paint your models and make them your own and customize them and give them that little bit of detail for yourself so Let's get ready to hop over to the computer, but if you guys are enjoying what you see in this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, join the crew. Everybody is important that uh, subscribes. I'm so thrilled every time I see a new subscriber. If you got questions about 3D printing or this model or anything like that, leave a comment down below. I will talk to you. So, um, and if you have any real inquiries or anything that you're curious about, my email is on the about page. Feel free to give me a reach out there as well. So, and of course, if you can, please share the video. Um, the more that we can get this channel going, the uh, better it is. So let's hop over to that computer and let's get this thing sliced in Kira. All right, guys. So here's the Pillar of Ottoman created by, I'm going to butcher this, Archidaxis. Um, this is a really clean model, really well cut. So you can easily print this on an Ender 3 or a small scale printer. So this is the uh, Thingiverse page. Link will be down in the description. So if you guys are curious to go get this model, go ahead and link it. Now you will notice in the final product, I accidentally busted a few tips of these guns. So what I'm gonna do to fix that is I may actually come back with mesh, mesh mixer and cut one of the guns off and just print the gun and then just snip the barrels and glue it on um, is one way to fix it. I may just use a 3D printing pin and try to build up and cut and just kind of smooth it out with a knife and a uh, a hot iron next to it to make it pliable for me to work with. Um, that was the only real problem I had with this model was the gun barrels. Um, they just kept breaking and that was because of the support that was all next into it. So that was really my only boo-boo um, that I had with printing this one. Otherwise, this is a really nice model. I have an actual model that came from a vendor that's actually smaller and Guys, I know it doesn't look like it. There's a ton of detail here if you really look at it. And a lot of what this one is is going to be in the painting. So I definitely intend on painting this one over on the other channel that I'm considering. So um, as you guys can see, even in the video, I paint, I print this white with Inland PLA Plus, And then I've already primered it, grayed it, 
And now I'm getting ready to go back with some masking tape to create a um, aztec look on it to make the panels different and add some different grays into it. Then I'll come back probably honestly with a permanent marker, a very fine tip permanent marker and start doing some real fine detailing on it. And then kind of paint outward with some washes and stuff like that to really give this some detail. But this is the model we're printing today. There are four files in the entire thing. So again, as I said, link in description, let's hop over, let's get those files into Cura. So I am still using Cura 4.8. I have not looked at 4.9 yet. I'm not ready to. So let's look at the full model. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? But I didn't like the full model. Um, there's a lot of places that our support's gonna be needed, a lot of ways to break very thin parts, um, especially right here, because how I would have tackled this model is, for me, I would have stood her upright on her back, just like that. That's how I would have tackled this. Now, granted, that's adding a ton of support. Actually, here, let's just do 80% support, and I'll show, show you why I don't like going this way. Because the way I did it, there was enough support that it was annoying, and it did cause me to break a few pieces. But if you look at the preview, I mean, just it's cased in support. I didn't like that. So the model maker, oh, kudos to you on this one, man. You created... You, you took the extra mile that is important and you, you cut it up in the best way to print. And to me, a model maker that takes the extra step to cut this up, yes, I know, it's, stop it, mesh tools, go away. That takes the extra time to make the model clean and printable is really huge kudos to you on doing that. So this is a CR10 build plate. You can easily print this on Ender 3. I did print all three pieces in one print. I did not scale up this time, which I know unusual for me. I usually scale it up, but I like the model size the way it is. It didn't need to be overly huge for me. I've done some pretty huge models you guys can see on the back that I've blown up or honestly, some of these were just printed the scale that they're made. And uh, I just didn't feel that this one needed to be big. So, and I felt like I would lose some detail if I really blew it up. So, all in all, I mean, you can just see the simple detail that you can do, that a paintbrush will bring out on the model. So, again, slicing 80%, the way this model is made, there's not a ton of support. There's supports in some spots, but not a ton needed. You can see it added a few extra shelves here on the engine cluster, which came off pretty easily. There's, the model is left deliberately very well hollow open, which is great, so we're not wasting PLA. And you know there is a support that it did get put in this one. Oh, I hit a button. But um, it came out very easily. It wasn't a real problem. And it gives good balance to the back to if you want to put this on a stand or go out and find a stand on Thingiverse to uh, do that, which I'm honestly thinking about doing a video just on model stands because there's so many different stands you can do that kind of make it kind of awesome to find a good one so that's our model we're going to hop over to the computer or to the printer we're going to get this printed in the cr10 we're going to see me take off the supports and get it glued together um, i did do some um, vallejo resin filler in the seams to help get those disappeared and do some did a little bit of sanding um I'm probably going to do another video just on my setup um, because I've added some new tools and different things like that. Um, big thanks to Canon for cameras that now I'm starting to use. You guys, I don't know if you've noticed the video uptake. I've switched from my phone. I've been on, I've used a GoPro. I've done my iPhone 12. I uh, did the iPhone 12 for quite a while. And now I'm using the Canon e EOS M50 and it, they do a really nice job. So um, quality is going to be improving, which is great. But hopefully we'll see more actually on the workbench after it's printed in here, cleaning it up, putting it together, and getting it ready before we send it over to paint. And I do apologize, guys. I do have a small printer running beside me. I'm nursing it through a print while I'm uh, recording this because I don't want to lose the print that it's doing. So um, if you've heard that in the background, I'm sorry. Um, but as we move forward here, let's hop over, get this printed, and I'll see you guys on the other side of the print.
All right, that's it. That's the model. While she looks small in my hand in the video, it's actually, I would say this is a good 12 inch model um, of the ship. Really good detail. I love the turret details. Um, you guys saw that just a few moments ago in the real close-ups that I give of the ship. There's a lot of sanding, some finishing I need to do, some filling, and then I'm going to get to painting. And if you guys want to see a paint video, um, I am thinking about launching a second channel that is actually just me painting models. Um, I don't feel like it fits over here um, because this is this channel is mainly about 3D printing, how to get a model 3D printed or upgrading and maintaining your current 3D printers or even just getting started. So I didn't feel the painting stuff actually sticks over here so i am thinking about launching a second channel let me know what you think about that if you guys want to see some videos over there of actually these getting painted the painting process that i take with airbrushing and all that kind of stuff so let me know what you think on that again if you enjoyed the video hit that subscribe button i thank you guys for joining us today and we'll see you in the next video